Let's bring in uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, members of The Shield. Nice. Good morning, guys. How are you, my man? Morning. Hey, you guys. Uh, you guys look a little uh, tired this morning. Is it? Is it tough traveling uh, and getting uh, up and doing this kind of stuff, and then having to? Go- I mean, you have to run around tonight. We're and- warriors, man. Nah, I mean it's it's that's that's sounds like tough work. I mean they they really put you through the ringer, don't they? Uh, we are never tired and we are never sore. I mean, I'm saying that in the way that uh, we put it out of our minds that we're never tired and we're really never sore, even though we're all tired and sore all the time. But that's just that yeah, it goes with the gig, and you know yeah, we're so used to it. we both been wrestling you know nearly a decade, so but, you know it's just. You just get used to it. It's just every other day. How many shows in. do you guys do? And uh, I mean, it, it, do you get, oh, ever get any time off? Oh, we did over two hundred last year. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's every week. You know, three, four shows a week, sometimes five, and then we got overseas tours every so often, where it's two week stretches where we're just on straight. You know what I mean? So it's uh, schedule is not light to say the least but you know what it's what we signed up for it's what we love to do it's a blast man no but that's amazing maybe people see you on tv and they see you running around doing all the stuff that you do in the rink but then they you have to think about it i mean you guys every place you go i'm assuming you wake up and you do stuff like this in the morning and then you have to go back well, i guess you take a nap or something and i mean <laughs> yeah, I, we I got know. in uh, about two thirty three last night we drove uh, straight from pittsburgh uh into this beautiful antarctic weather oh yeah it's good, great weather right and uh you hit the strip club yeah. up when you get into town? <laughs> um, I mean, la- not last night. Yeah. Or, never. I never <laughs> do that. No, do you I actually would... get time to go out and party after these things, or are you always just moving on to the next event? Uh, it's it's a lot lo- like moving on to the next event. Uh, usually the, the weekend kind of runs from, like, Friday to Tuesday for us, so we're, we're in a different town every night, and then – Tuesday night, if you if if the guys want to go out and party or girls, yeah, uh, Tuesday is kind of the night. Tuesday is the night. The big well, WWE we're party. In the same, night. We're in the same town that we wrestled in, and then you know we're able to stay at the hotel that night before we fly out the next morning. Usually, right. usually. So, um, if there was a night, not saying we party. That would Tuesdays. Tuesdays the one for WWE. So how do they, how do they? Uh, uh, I mean, we've had a lot of wrestlers in here, but I don't know if we've had too many tag teams in here that I can recall. Uh, when they put a team together, uh, who does that? Do they come up and they say, "Hey, look, we we want you guys to work together." Is this an idea that? So you guys come up with, I mean, how does, uh, what's the genesis? Of it can be either way. Uh, two like guys this? can, you know, sometimes guys have been together for years. They've come up uh, through the, the the developmental system together. Sometimes uh, two established guys can be thrown together. And sometimes it could be their own idea or it could be a suggestion from somebody else. And uh, our, all three of us, uh, Roman Reigns, who isn't here, and uh, Seth and myself, we had instant, ca- we all knew each other, you know, from, a year or two before uh, we'd been in developmental together in Florida and uh, we had instant chemistry from the get go and uh, we were all on the same page uh, uh, just mentality wise, you know, just uh, bringing, you know, really, really serious work ethic to what we're doing and going out there, you know, we're all really hungry and they're all really talented and uh, we just are all, the thing that makes us uh, really effective is that we're three completely different uh, types of uh, performers, types of competitors, and we bring three completely different uh, skill sets and uh, attributes to the table. And this has been instant uh, chemistry that this works really well, and uh, I think we've all all benefited from it. Now, is there at some point that you eventually say, okay, we're working as the Shield. There's three guys that are that are doing this, but at some point I want to – branch out i want to be like my own guy because i'm i'm assuming that's how you i mean you the, the biggest characters are like you know single guys i don't mean single like single but you know what i'm talking about I so, mean, we're all yeah. our own men you know what i mean and if there ever comes a time where we need to go off and do our own i mean ambrose here is the united states champion and he can only defend that by himself so i mean there's plenty of times where he's out there by by himself roman and my, myself are the same way uh you know what i mean so th- there's no uh there's no jealousy or animosity or anything like that. I mean, we're all stepping out and doing our own thing. But, I mean, when we're together as a unit, it's it's pretty strong. <laughs> How did you uh, get started in wrestling, Seth? Oh, uh, man, I uh, 
I just got trained. I didn't know what else to do. You know what I mean? I was in high school and I just loved wrestling my whole life. And I was like, well, this is what I'm gonna do. You know? What where I mean? did you Where did you grow up? I I grew up in Iowa, uh, oh, okay. Davenport, Iowa. So well, wrestling is big out there in Iowa. Like actual, you know, yeah, collegiate wrestling, wrestling is and huge. Yeah. Right. Um, I actually had to go to Chicago to get trained. I trained in like a shipping warehouse uh, in the dead of winter with a cat named Danny Daniels, who's just like a local independent wrestler guy, and uh, he he. Took me and a few dudes under his wing, basically an apprenticeship, trained us, and then you just start small time, just like any, just like a rock band, you know what I mean? Just a small time deal, man, where you're working for hardly any money and, and uh, you know, bingo halls and Elks Lodges, <laughs> and, and you're just killing yourself for nothing, just working your way up, trying to get noticed. So, that, I mean, that's, I literally Which do you think you, floor. you bring up a good analogy, like a, a rock band. I mean, there's so many people that want to get in. Every time we have wrestlers in here, guys call in, they go, I want to do this, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing with rock bands. Which do you think is more, what do you have a better shot at, becoming a huge rock band or actually making it in wrestling? Both seem almost impossible. I mean, the, the odds are so slim. Yeah, and the odds are it's for both. You know what I mean? I would liken them uh, to be very similar because it takes an, an extreme amount of talent and dedication and drive. You don't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm going to be the greatest guitar player that ever lived. And you don't right. just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm going to be a member of the Shield and be awesome and work for WWE. It's like, I mean, you literally got to put the time in. You yeah, got to work harder I, than everybody else. I think I heard else. a stat once. I don't know exactly how true it is that your odds are better of making it in the NFL than they are of uh, making it in WWE if you're a, a wrestler on any level. I don't know how true that is, but, I mean, that that's there's only so many spots available. Well, the other guy that's in the Shield, uh, uh, I forget the, his name right off the top Roman, of my head. But, Roman Reigns. But he, what, didn't he play uh, uh, in the NFL, or he, or he was, uh, 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 he I was don't know a, if he actually played, but he was drafted. He was a star at Georgia Tech. Yeah. He's, uh, I believe, a DN at Georgia Tech, and uh, he had a... a Big f football future ahead of him, but he—I mean, this is wrestling's in his blood. Like his his uh, his dad and, and uncle are—they uh, were wrestlers before that, and it's just it's in his family genetics, and this is just what he loved to do. He ended up falling into it, and and uh, he's a prototype for it. So he, yeah, I mean, he, but he did play football beforehand. I don't know if he actually played in the NFL, maybe on some practice squads, but I know Georgia Tech. He was the man. If you go down in their weight room, they got picture of him up there. Like, he's like the dude, man. We we go down there and train sometimes, and he's like a, he walks in, and he's like a king there. They treat him like royalty. What about you, uh, uh, Dean? How how did you get started in wrestling? Uh, much the much the same way. Uh, started showed up uh, wrestling school in Cincinnati when I was 16 years old, industrial warehouse, and just uh, start getting beat up and start learning uh, the basics and. The holds and the, the fundamental basics and, you know, train for a year or so, start having matches and just get the crap kicked out of you for the longest time and uh, start to figure out what you're doing and, uh, you know, getting a grasp on it. And then you you hit the road and you just you network and and you just go out there and you just drive and pile six guys into a car and, you know, fill the tank up as much as you can and you just hit as many uh, little shows as you can and uh, you just kind of climb up the ranks that way until you start. Uh, what getting... makes it so difficult? Is it the physicality or is it just the grind of, of you know, putting your time in and learning the, the craft? I mean. Well, uh, wrestling's a interesting thing because you really have to get it to to be able to to do it like uh, you can be a, an amazing athlete and just look like a complete dork in the ring you know, <laughs> some guy you know guys are you know uh super ncaa heisman level athletes or pro athletes and they you know they come into maybe the wwe performance center or they come into a wrestling training facility somewhere and they think like oh and you think this is a, this big blue chip prospect? Oh, he's gonna pick up on this immediately. He's an amazing athlete, and he just looks like an idiot. It, you know, like I like to say, like I'm not like a real athlete. I'm like a pretend athlete. And but really great athletes you know, sometimes can get in the ring and just look like absolute foolish and make me look like a great athlete because I just know what I'm doing and get it on a on a different kind of level. So you really have to have just a, a built in mental grasp on it, and you can pick it up and uh, get better at it but it's a strange thing because it's performance um, it, there's just so many different things 
tied into it. It's improv. It's uh, um, your emotional performance the, and, and the athleticism. And just you have to be very durable and you have to be just willing to take a pounding every single night, and uh, which is uh, – Something we're really good at. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if I ever actually got any sleep, I'd probably just you be, I'd look nuts. You know, I'm so used to, I think we all are just used to just go, 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 right. go. That, like, you know, if I ever, like, got rested up or got a chance to heal up or get any sleep, I'd probably, I'd probably freak out. I wouldn't fall apart. Well, I've, just, I've asked know, these guys that have running. come in here before because, it, like, with the grind and WWE, I mean, they've sort of explained to me how they're doing their own insurance and all this kind of stuff and how many, the number of shows that they're doing. And I, I, I've always thought to myself, well, why why run guys that ragged? I mean, uh, just for for their own sake. You'd think, uh, you know, that would be like if the military just, if we kept putting soldiers out there tour after tour after tour after tour, you know, you, you, they're going to they're gonna burn out. You know, it's, it's, it's supply and demand for one thing, you know what I mean? If we're not running shows and we're not making money, yeah. then that's just the name of the game, you know what I mean? In any sort of business and entertainment industry and stuff like that. And and like we were talking about earlier, you know, he was saying the odds of uh, of uh, you know making it in the WWE are, are, are slimmer than making it in a professional sport like the NFL or something like that. I mean, there are premium superstars in WWE. WWE, there's just not that many of us. You know what I'm saying? Like if you look at the sheer numbers, we're talking less than a hundred guys on our roster who are mm-hmm. big name you know, guys who can go out every single night that people are going to pay to see. So it's just it's just the nature of the job, you know what I mean? You can call it a circus, you can call it a traveling show, whatever you want. I mean, we just it's just how we do our yeah. thing, you know what I mean? And the human body and mind is an extremely adaptive organism, and we just get used to it. You get, it's like anything in life, you know what I mean? You figure out a way to make it work. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins uh, from The Shield, WWE, uh, Monday Night Raw is tonight at 7.30 at Quick Alone's Arena. I, I've, I, I'm not a huge wrestling fan, and I actually, they sent me a few years ago they, they, to, uh, uh, to an event, WWE did, and they said, why don't you come out and sit, oh, yeah. you know, ringside, and oh, it was yeah. actually a lot of fun. I'd never been to one before. I was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, w- one thing that was interesting to me was how... I mean, they run this like a machine. It is so well coordinated, and I'm just looking around. I'm looking at all the, you know, the <laughs> staging. Every, every. I mean, I'm soaking the whole thing in. It was, it was, uh, it's pretty amazing. But it's very coordinated. Do, do things in these live shows ever just go horribly wrong, or have you have you come into something like you mentioned? You know, the, 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 there's improv involved in this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Like. What's what's something that has happened that has just gone just completely unexpected or or? Oh, wacky? I remember, uh, like it was like a year, or a year and a half, two years ago when the uh, the lighting rig caught on fire somehow, like oh, a yeah. light bulb exploded or something. It was in Cincinnati, uh, where I'm from, and it was at the U.S. Bank Arena. And I I had been telling people earlier in the day, like you know, this building's haunted, right? <laughs> the ghosts of the uh, like the top floor is haunted from the ghosts of the. Uh, People who uh, got trampled in that Who concert oh in like the seventies. You know was that the same place? Yeah. Oh wow. Right? The, when they had the festival seating and they right. opened the doors and everybody just ran in. And, right. Uh, I've been telling people that whole day, like, yeah, I'm telling you, this building supposedly haunted. And watch out. <laughs> and then, sure enough, you know, like right when the right when the show started, <laughs> crackle. Never happened in a million years. You know, the lighting accidents like that and everybody's like oh my god and it was, it was shortly before uh they were gonna go live on raw and i'm like that's it i told you the ghost <laughs> you should have put ghost protection up on your lighting equipment double check everything yeah. i think the most notable situation arena. that you might be talking about is uh one of our our broadcasters jerry the king lawler who's also a legendary wrestler he had a heart attack live on the air uh was you know a year a couple years ago or whatever yeah. and uh our medical staff was right there on top of it. The show went off pretty much without a hitch, and they saved his life. Uh, and, and it was, I mean, it was a moment of panic. But they were able, I mean, like you were saying, it's it's like clockwork. And there's somebody for everybody, you know, every every aspect of what we do. And the people on TV, you know, that they're watching on television, they see, what, you know, the superstars and the commentators and all that stuff. But there are so many unsung heroes Guys who are just there every single day, you know, they, they, somebody's got to set that that stuff up. There's a crew that comes in that gets 
you know, as little or less sleep than we're getting. And they're in there setting up and tearing that stuff down after we leave. And, you know, there's a whole catering team and there's just people in every department who are making sure that our lives are easy, you know, sacrificing their time, being away from their family and kids to make sure that, like, everything goes smoothly, as smoothly as, as you have seen it in the past. So it's a whole team and it's people who've been in those positions for years and years and years just doing it night after night. So that they're prepared when you know the whole set catches on yeah, fire, yeah. or God forbid somebody has a medical emergency. It's 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 amazing to watch and be a part of. I mean, it yeah, we you maybe uh, we really have the easiest jobs, especially we get the reward every single night. You know, the the work is the travel, and you know nobody likes to you know sludge through snow and you know get up early or whatever. But this thing, you know, that's whatever. It's no big deal. We get the reward of uh, going out there every night and getting to perform and feel the energy of the audience, and you know. You know, leaving the arena, you know, you're covered in sweat, you you know, breathing all heavy, you're all hyped up, you you know, that was your adrenaline's pumped, you know, that's the thing that fuels you to go on the next one every single night. So we get that reward, you know. All we gotta do is just you know, we get to have fun. So Right. You know, we got that we had a great job. I'd much rather have all, you know, we don't got it nearly as bad as, you know, guys that are getting up at four AM every day and laying bricks and stuff for twelve <laughs> hours, you know. We got it pretty sweet. Which member of the shield gets the most women? If you had to say, oh Roman, hands down. <laughs> well, you know what? Different kind, different kinds of women for each member of the Shield. I would yeah. say we all kind of have our demographics, but Roman's, Roman's, he's not here, so I can call him the Fabio. <laughs> he's got the long locks and the, you know the big muscles and the tattoo and. The Do la- people look the the look of wrestlers has changed over the past decade or so too? I mean, do you guys ever run into people? I mean, you guys are big guys, but you're not huge. Do you guys ever run into people who just don't even believe that you're wrestlers? They look at you and they go, you're not, you're not big enough. I mean, the whole look to wrestlers has changed, hasn't it? Yeah, there's a stereotype, I think, of what people are used to when you think about Hulk Hogan or The Rock, these larger-than-life type guys. But, I mean, if you go to a show nowadays, you're, it, the athlete has changed, the performer has changed, and a lot of that has to do with uh, just the times and where we're at as far as um, combat sports are concerned in general. People, you know, they believe a George St. Pierre can kick your ass. Right, you know right. I mean? So, like, um, for guys like us, especially with our styles, they're just different than, than the way, you know, I don't ever want to move the way Hulk Hogan moved. You know, I'm 6'2", about 210, and I'm an athlete. I like to think I am anyway. You know what I mean? I train to be an athlete like I, I like to be mobile and quick and, and strong and fast and be able to do it all so like it's just a different mindset it's just a different generation it's a, the, i mean the action is much faster paced than it ever was in the in the 80s or 70s and stuff like that or even the 90s right so like it just takes a different kind of, of athlete to be able to perform at this level you know you have to be in some cardio shape you can't just is there trot along. anyone that you guys uh see and you go a, a guy who's wrestling now that you go, wow, this guy is just incredible. Uh, I mean, I wish I could do the kind of stuff that this guy's doing. Is there anyone that's just that and, great at it? Antonio Cesaro, uh, a good friend of both of ours, and a guy we've known for a long time, and a guy that is every single day that he does something more and more amazing. One of the just freaky strong, just like a guy, he's a Swiss guy. You know, grew up on a farm in Switzerland. He used to carry around a sheep from the time it was a little baby every single day. And as the sheep grew, and he still carried around the sheep, he got stronger every single day. And then he, he had two of them, two baby sheeps. That's how he built his physique up. He's out of his day. mind. He's an absolute uh, freak of nature athlete and a guy who can do just some stuff that will blow your mind and just never fails to amaze me. Claudia, uh, Antonio Cesaro always just blows my mind. Yeah. Well, uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose from The Shield are here. Uh, uh, I know you guys have other stuff to do today. Uh, it looks like you guys need a little bit of sleep. And uh, Do you guys go back and you take a nap before you actually go and perform tonight? Or what? what is the schedule like on a we'll, we'll day see. like this? We'll see what, what, the, what the day holds. Might get in a workout today before we go to the building. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, the tickets are still available for the show tonight, 7.30 p.m. Get tickets at theqarena.com. Uh, or 1-888-894-9424. And uh, well, thank you guys. Where was Roman this morning? What what happened? Uh... I don't know, Dean. Where was Roman this morning? Huh? Uh, yeah, he had a long night. He had a little bit of a rough night. And uh, he uh, 
He just didn't make it to the lobby this morning. Was he know. hung over or something? Or, uh... No, you know, he was in the Royal Rumble, man. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and uh, I don't know, sometimes we have arguments and we don't run around in the same car together. So, <laughs> fine. Does it, is it difficult for, uh, I mean, how do you guys normally travel? I mean, how do you get from place to place? You guys fly? You guys you drive? Or do you, you go together? Or how do you normally get from place to place? We typically fly into uh, the first town in a loop, uh, like a Friday morning. Everybody will hook up at the airport. We all live in different cities. And uh, we'll hook up at the airport whenever we all get in. Usually rent a car and just hit the first town, drive to the next town, next town, next town, and then... Somebody drop off the car and everybody fly home and then have a day off and then come back and do it again. So is it difficult, like just from personalities, when you're spending that much time with with people? And you know, how guys are guys. Sometimes personalities clash. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, how often do do guys get in? Uh, I'm not saying physical fights or whatever, but I mean, how many beefs are there between guys? Is it well, I mean, it's cr- it's it's crucial to uh, to find a proper traveling, you know, partner and or partners because. We spend, I mean, I spend more time with these guys than I do my, you know, family at home. So, I mean, you can imagine if you live with someone, just getting to know their ins and outs and their little nuances, and it's just stuff that's going to, you know what I mean? Every once in a while, you need your space. Right. So, because uh, otherwise, like, stuff will happen like you're talking about where you just start fighting about, you know, who left the bar of soap on the, you know, bathroom floor or right. whatever. You just start right. yelling at each other about dumb stuff. So, it's like... Um, you know, it's good to travel. It's it's great times on the road, you know what I mean? Just talking about wrestling and life and, you know, singing some songs and stuff like that in the car. But at the same time, you got to gotta spread out and have some space. How long do you think bit. you can do this, Seth? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I'd like to do it for a good bit of time. I've been at it for about a decade now. If I get another decade or two under my belt, I'd feel pretty uh, feel pretty fortunate. What about you, Dean? You think uh, How much time do you think you can you can do this? Who knows? I mean, I like to go out there and assume and uh, perform as if this is the last night I will ever get to do this. Because you never know. It could be. I could get hit by a bus walking out here right now, you know? So, um, <laughs> you know, who's to say who and can what, look into the future? What do like you want to do like afterwards? That. What do you guys want to do after, uh, uh, you know? I mean, some guys go into announcing. Some guys go, hey, forget it. I've, I've had enough wrestling for a lifetime. I'm going to go uh, become an alpaca farmer or something. I mean, what, Ooh, what alpaca do you do? farming. What yeah. do you want to do They're after cute this? little animals, right? <laughs> like llama-looking yeah. things. I don't know, man. I've always talked about just disappearing, you know, getting off the grid, just going away. But I have a feeling I'm going to be, like, trapped in this forever. Yeah. Like, I have so much invested. I feel like I'll be around, like, doing something, helping out young talent or whatever it may be for too many years. So uh, we'll see. You you just never know. You know what I mean? We're both young guys, under 30 years old, just um, first year uh, with WWE on the road. So it's like, who knows where we're going to end up when we're 35, 40 years old. It's, It's too far away. Well, hey, uh, thank you guys for coming in. I appreciate it. The uh, The show is tonight, 730 at Quicken Loans Arena, WWE Monday Night Raw. Get tickets at theqarena.com. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins from The Shield. Uh, I have to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. Rover's Morning Glory.